Hey friends, today we're building a parser in Go that parses the Squire story format. Squire is a format I'm introducing that lets you write choose your own adventure style interactive fiction in Markdown that's ready to be published in the Kindle store. Here's a book that I've published. And as you can see at the end of each section, you have some choices and you can choose one of those and find out what happens as a result of your actions. Today we're building the parser and in future episodes, we'll be building a converter and a player. So come along with me as we start this journey. Our directory structure is already set up and it looks like this. We've got our command folder, which has a Squire subfolder. So that will end up being the name of the binary for our main.go once we get around to that. We've got our go mod and our go sum, which you would expect. Those just manage dependencies. We have an internal folder where some of the guts that we don't want to expose to the outside world, but that we need for ourselves might be placed later. And then we have a package parser folder with a parser.go and a parser test. Those are basically skeletons right now. We'll see those in a minute. Additionally, we have test data, which includes an invalid story and a valid story. Let's take a quick look at the parser and the parser test. So the parser is empty. It's a package parser and it has a parse function, which is capitalized, so it'll be exposed. And that will be our interface for parsing these stories. Additionally, we have a test, which basically just reads the valid story, makes sure that we don't have any problem reading it off disk, and then does a skip. And likewise, the same thing for the invalid story. If you're not familiar with the Squire story format, don't worry, I'll look at that real quick. Squire is a markdown based format for writing interactive text adventures. You can sort of think of choose your own adventure style stories where there is a branching narrative based off the choices that you make as a reader. So it starts with some Pandoc style front matter where we have a percent and then the title of the story. In this case, it's you're probably going to die because a lot of these stories end up with you dying in wild ways, ancient mummies, aliens, those sorts of things. The next line is a percent sign and then the author. In this case, it's me, Jeffrey Chupp. And then we get into the chapters. So a chapter starts with a pound sign, which is a markdown H1. It has some title. In this case, it's something isn't right here. And then it has a ID, which is wrapped in curly braces with a pound sign. So the ID here is intro and the IDs let us jump between chapters based on our choices. A chapter can have any amount of text in it. Uh, in this case, we only have one line, but you will see that it does have markdown formatting. This could have any number of pages, any number of images, those sorts of things. And then at the end of the chapter, we have our choices. So we can pick up the phone and that takes us to the phone chapter. Do not answer goes to ignore phone and jump in a nearby lion's mouth takes us to lion. Let's imagine that we pick up the phone. We end up down here because this phone ID matches up with this phone ID on the choice. We have a title, uh, it's your grandmother and you die. Again, you die in a lot of ways in these stories. So it only seemed fitting for this example. Uh, but you have a link to start over and that takes you back to the intro. So it's not a dead end because you can continue reading. Uh, you just start right back over. Interestingly, if we jump into the nearby lion's mouth, we don't die and we have more choices. One last thing I'll mention is that there are a con there is a concept of intentional dead ends. So in this case, there's actually a win scenario. If we do all the right things, we get to gain superpowers and institute world peace. And in this case, we don't want to start over. Uh, but because our parser is going to be looking for validation errors to try to help the author write a better story with no unintentional dead ends, we need to mark this as an intentional dead end. And we can do so by adding two exclamation points after the ID. And that's all you need to know about the format. We also have an invalid story, which is broken in a number of ways. So here we don't have an author or a title. The first chapter is missing an ID. These choices are, in this case, missing an ID, in this case, missing the text. This chapter doesn't have a chapter title, it only has an ID. So these are all things that we want to be able to parse and give useful errors to the user about so that our writer can correct these issues and make the story better. So let's get into writing the parser for the valid story. Uh, we have these tests and I'm just going to run them to see what happens. And they're okay, which only means that we're able to read the story from disk. And that's great. It's just coming from our test data file. Content is what we'll store that uh, file as in memory. And then what we'll say is story error is going to be parser.parse content. We're gonna get bytes from read file, but we actually want this to be a string. So we'll just wrap that real quick. Uh, if there's an error, that's a fatal because we're looking at a valid story here. Otherwise we can make some assertions about our story. I'll show you a trick here, which is if you go and you copy things from your document and you put it in your file as a comment, so we'll put this right in our test file and just comment it out. 
now we've given Copilot a little more context to make better assertions. So uh, what we can do now is say assert dot equal, and we'll import a cert in a second. So you see it picks up the story title is you're probably going to die. That's awesome. Uh, the story author is Jeffrey Chupp. Perfect. Um, and so we want to make sure there's a length of chapters. So it's calling them blocks. We'll call them chapters because we know more than they do at this point. And let's see how many there are. It's six. We have six places that start with the pound sign. So if it's not six, then we will fatal. Great. Um, this is not the import we want. So let's fix that. We actually want, there we go, testify assert. Great. Um, yeah, and so uh, we've got invalid arguments, but we'll fix those in a minute. Let's go ahead and beef up our tests a little more. So in the event that we do get our sixth chapter, we can actually make some assertions about chapter one or chapter zero as uh, the zero index goes. Uh, and so we'll say the title is something isn't right here. Again, you can see that it's Copilot is being hinted and pulling in stuff. Uh, the chapter ID is intro, the chapter text, that looks correct. And then we should have some number of choices. So if len of chapter one dot choices is not three, we'll fatal on that. Otherwise, we can make some assertions about our choices. So we'll say, we'll use our own helper here. We'll say assert choice. And we'll say chapter one choices zero is going to be pick up the phone, phone, do not answer, ignore phone, and jump it in your right lion's mouth, lion mouth. Or sorry, lion. And great, that matches exactly what we have. Let's go ahead and add one more thing, which is the last chapter. So we'll just give some context here for Copilot. We'll say last chapter is going to be the fifth chapter, because again, we're zero index. So that's great. Going to school, backpack. On your way to school, when a meteor lands on you, you gain superpowers and gain world peace. We actually need a couple line breaks, and then the you win there. And we have zero choices. Perfect. OK, uh, let's see. We messed up here. That's fine. Chapter one. Forgetting my go today. All right, perfect. Well, not perfect. We have five errors, but we'll get to that. Uh, first, let's define assert choice. So I think it will look like this. I think this is good. We have the text and the target. I'm going to rename target to be chapter ID. And then this is great. So Copilot has marked it as a helper. What that means is if this assertion on line 15 fails, we're not going to see line 15 in our stack trace. We're going to see the corresponding line where the uh, original assertion was on line 50. So. Line 50 is where we'll get the error rather than it showing up in our helper function. OK, so now we're down to the things we actually haven't implemented yet, which is we don't know what a choice is. And this is taking too many arguments and not returning enough arguments. Uh, so if we look at our parser, we know that we want it to take some string content. So let's, let's go ahead and add that. This will be content string. Great. And it should return a story and an error. Thanks, Copilot. But those aren't defined, so let's define those. So we'll make some structs here. And I'm calling it structs.go, which is very lazy naming. But we can always make that better later. Uh, we don't need to import anything. We'll just say type story is a struct. And what is a story? A story has an author, a title, and some number of chapters. Oops. Uh, so let's see, structs. We'll make that. Harpoon as well. So that's number four. All right, so we have a title, we have an author, and we have an array of chapters. It's almost like Copilot's reading my mind. The chapter isn't defined, so let's do that. So we know that a chapter has a title, it has an ID, and it has, well, it's a body, but very good Copilot. And then it's going to have an array of choices. Good so far. What's a choice? Well, a choice is text and then a chapter ID. And it's able to infer all of this based on the code we've already written. Uh, specifically, over in our test here, we introduce the idea of a chapter ID. We introduce the idea of a choice. All of these things are now in its universe, and so it's able to give us some good hints. Um, great. So this should actually be body, we said, which is good. Uh, and let's see. 
So now, yeah, we'll make this one body as well. And our tests are happy as far as diagnostics go. But if we run the tests, uh, we'll see that our tests actually fail. And when we come over here, oh, actually, we didn't even get to the test because there's a missing return here. So we can return story and nil and rerun our tests. Okay, so now we're getting a test failure that's valid. We wanted the title, you're probably going to die. Uh, you know what, I got my actual and my expected flipped here. Okay, so the, yes, expected goes first and Copilot didn't know that and I didn't think about it. This is a problem with trusting something. Um, so those should be good. Let's fix these up here. And then I think the search choice is fine because we're, we're pretty clear about what the arguments are there. Um, we'll just fix these. All right, and now we're good. So if we run the test again, it's more clear. We expected you're probably going to die and we got nothing. And we expected Jeffrey Chupp as author, but we didn't get that either. Uh, so let's start working on that. Our parser is going to return a story, but we're going to be building it as we go. So let's start by initializing that. And then we're going to parse this line-wise. So, hey, lines are good. We could use a very clever markdown library here to actually give us an abstract syntax tree or something to that effect and, and walk through that. But we're going to go with the simplest approach here for a couple of reasons. One, I think it'll be more maintainable for me long term if I fully understand every bit of it. Secondly, uh, we can do things that the markdown parser might not be able to. It, depending on the parser, it may or may not be uh, good at figuring out where errors are and understanding what the user's meant to type. You know, it may just like error out if the thing isn't valid. Whereas with a line-wise parser, we can do a little more uh, digging into what they might've intended and we can give them better suggestions because we're deeply concerned and knowledgeable about the uh, the domain here. We understand what a Squire story is so we can give the kind of feedback we wanna give. So uh, with our lines in hand, we can iterate over those lines. And we're going to do a switch statement here. So case is front matter. We'll deal with our front matter first. We're going to get that author and that title. Uh, we'll do something with that. Let's close that off. We're not going to use that variable yet. Okay, so we want to do something with is front matter, but let's implement it first. So what is front matter? Front matter is going to be a string that has a prefix of percent space. And now that we know that, we can say if the story that title is blank, then we can get the story title, trim space, hmm. and then the line after that. I think we, I think it's probably, yes, I think trim prefix is probably gonna be clearer. Otherwise, we can set the author. Uh, so the problem here is if you have multiple lines of front matter, if you have more than two, then whatever the last line is will keep getting assigned to author. And that's, probably an error that we should handle at some point, but I'm not really concerned about that right now. Uh, we'll get to that later if we decide to care about that at all right now. Uh, it may just be a use good judgment thing in the short term. So let's run our tests. And great, we have our author and our title. So now what we need is our chapters. We expected six and we got none, and that's because we're not parsing the chapters yet, so that makes sense. I think what we want to do is initialize a chapter outside of our loop as well, because we're going to be building that within the loop. So we'll say chapter is going to be a chapter. And if we don't have front matter, let's look and see if we have is new chapter for the line. Whoops. And hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and do what we did last time and define a new chapter first. That actually needs to be up there. Yeah, so what is a new chapter? New chapter is going to be a line that begins with a pound sign and then a space. That's great. So we'll say, uh, hmm. as we're looping through, we may already have a chapter. So if we get to a new chapter, we need to add that previous chapter to our story and make a new one. So if chapter.id is not blank, we're going to do that. We'll append the chapter to our story chapters. 
and then we'll set chapter to be an empty chapter. So that should help us accumulate these things as we go. This sort of makes sense, but the problem is we also have the ID at the end, so we can't just naively trim the prefix. I think what we want instead is to do uh, title and ID are going to be parse chapter title and ID. Seems legit. Uh, if title's not blank, then we'll assign that. If ID's not blank, we'll assign that. Okay. Uh, so now we need to define parks, chapter, title, and ID. Let's do that. And, hmm. No, this isn't what we want at all. But we can't really blame Copilot there. So what we'll do is actually grab this guy and hop back over here. And we'll make a regex. So const title regex. We'll say chapter, new chapter regex. How about that? Is going to be, uh, hmm, let's give it our hint. Okay, so we gave it our hint. So now what we want is regex dot must compile. And let's see, let's let Copilot guess here. That looks pretty good. What we have is we're starting with a pound sign. We have a space and then we're capturing some number of characters until we get to the ID and we're capturing the part that's after the pound sign, which is what we want. And then we're at the end of the line. Uh, that works for now. We may want to make it a little looser later, but that's fine. Uh, let's see. Right. So this actually needs to just be a var, which is fine. Uh, cool. So we have a new chapter regex um, that we can use below. Great. So if the matches are not three, it's going to return blank and blank. Otherwise, it will return the title, which is match one, and the ID, which is match two. So let's run our tests. And we expected six chapters, but we got five. Uh, so if you want to take a moment and think about that, and why that is, you can pause the video right here. The problem is that we're only adding chapters when we get a new chapter. So uh, we got the first chapter that we're collecting in memory, then we get to chapter two and we're like, aha, new chapter, let's save chapter one. The problem is when we get to chapter six, we've saved chapter five at that point, but when we get to the bottom of the file, we're not actually adding chapter six to our list. So we're just gonna copy this for now and throw it down here. So if we have a chapter ID at the end, we'll add it onto our list and this should give us all six chapters. It did not. Why did it not? Okay, so why did that not work? Let's do an fmt.print line here and we'll pop out our story. And our last thing is decide to skip school. And we know that from here, we actually should have going to school as our last item. Hmm. Aha, so the trick is uh, we have going to school, which ends with these pound signs and that does not match our regex. So let's give this another example. Okay, so for now it's just getting everything after that and that's fine for now. Later we want to capture those specifically because we want to be able to indicate whether it's an intentional or unintentional dead end, but for now that's fine. Do that just for cleanliness and good. So now the problem is we expected to get a body for our chapter, but we didn't. So let's hop down here. We will get rid of this. We don't need to print that out anymore. And the body for a chapter is really any line that isn't any of the other things. With the exception of the fact that we haven't started handling choices yet. So uh, what we'll do here is we'll say default and we'll say chapter dot body is going to be the line and then a new line. This is oversimplistic, but let's see what happens. So what we see is we expected, you hear a phone ringing, something makes you suspicious of it. We actually got worse some new lines before that, that text, and then all of our choices. So let's, we're gonna need to handle our choices as well. So case is choice for the line. It's going to do that. And let's define what is choices. So up here we'll say is choice. 
and it is a line that begins with that, and we'll say it also has that in it. That's gonna be a little too fuzzy, I think, for our validations later, but it will work for now. And so if it is a choice, then we will, whoops, we will say choice is going to be parse choice for the line. And then we'll say chapter.choices is going to be just like that. Okay, so what is parse choice? Parse choice will be not that, although <laughs> that does give us a lot of examples to work with. So I like your energy copilot, but we're just going to do a string and then it's going to return a choice. Okay, and I think we want to handle this similarly to how we handle the new chapter regex. So we'll say choice regex, and let's just grab a choice real quick. Grab a couple examples. These look good. Is going to be that. And let's see, that gives us the square braces and it gives us the capture group that is after the pound sign. So our ID doesn't have the pound sign in it, which means we get lion instead of pound lion. That's great. Uh, so now let's hop down here and let's see, it'll apply that should get that let's see how that looks okay um so we got a failure which is we still have this extra new lines before and after so we have a white space problem um it looks like our choices are okay but we haven't actually seen them fail so let's let's do that real quick we're just going to add in some exclamation points here because i want to see the failure before I believe that it actually works. All right, so here we go. We got pickup phone with some exclamation points. We wanted pickup phone without them. Seems legit. So now what we need to do is deal with our space issue that we have here. We might think that we could do chapter.body is chapter.body plus line plus line break and then like trim that whole thing every time. But the problem is we actually have some intentional white space that we want. So let's just see what that would look like. Uh, chapter.body is chapter.body plus line plus that, and we'll just wrap this whole thing in a strings.trim space. And when we run this, we see that for this guy, we wanted some line breaks after world piece, but we, we lost them because we're trimming as we go. So that's not what we want. I think what we want instead is to do the trimming at the place where we add the chapter to the story. So what we'll do then is we're going to change this to be uh, story.chapters, hmm, we'll say story.append chapter and give it the chapter. We'll get rid of that. And down here, we'll do the same thing. Okay, just make sure, okay, good. We're still resetting our chapter there. So um, that's grumpy because we haven't implemented that yet. So let's do that. And we'll do that right here. So we'll say func. Pen chapter is that, except first we're going to say c.body is going to be uh, strings.trim space c.body. Love it. Let's run our tests and everything passes. We did it. We can parse a valid story. And let's just see what that looks like real quick. Let's go over to our main. Uh, so in main.go, we will do this and um we're gonna actually just copy this out for now from here and that looks good this will actually be a pkg parser test data valid seems legit uh parser to parse content well it's string content right uh, this will be we'll just panic with the error for now and then we'll say story or error is that. We're gonna refine this later. Uh, if error is not nil, we'll panic with the error. Otherwise, print line for this. Let's just dump out the whole story, shall we? Okay. Uh, and then what does that look like? We'll do go run on cmd squire main.go. And we parse the whole thing. 
Uh, this is kind of hard to read and that's okay uh, because we're not going to actually be interacting with it in this way. Um, but we can see that we have our choices in here. So we have jump into nearby lion's mouth and that links to lion. So we should be in a good spot to work with this. So now what we want to do is to parse the invalid story. So let's take a look at that guy. And what we'll say is in our tests, we want to actually make some assertions about the errors we get here. So uh, we're still gonna do this, but in this case, if the error is nil, that's a problem. We're not going to use our story. So we'll get rid of that. And content is going to be this. Great. Uh, so we don't have any new variables, so we can drop this. Good deal. I'm going to off camera audit the story and get a list of the errors that I want, and then we can look at them together. Okay, so here are our expected errors. Missing title, missing author, invalid chapter title, invalid choice, invalid choice, invalid chapter title, missing chapter text, invalid chapter ID for choice, unreachable chapter, dead end, that's unintentional dead end, uh, and then so on. And so if we look at our invalid, we're, we're looking for a dead end on line 16. And if we hop to line 16, we see that there is indeed a dead end because we have some text, but then there are no choices and we have not explicitly marked it with the double exclamation point for an intentional dead end. So these are our expected errors. And I think what we'll just do is say assert.equal that. And this is going to be a huge failure that is in no way going to be very readable, but we'll see what we got. Okay. Um, so we wanted an error and we got a nil. Hey, we can do better than that. So let's hop over here and we know that right now we're returning the story and nil and it's always going to be nil. I think what we want instead is to return validate and give it a story. And so let's keep that private for now. Okay. So we'll do validator.go, do that. And validator is also going to be in the parser package. Um, you could argue semantics there, but this is fine. And it is going to have a func validate, which takes a story and returns some errors. And that's it's getting way ahead of me there. So let's just go with that. Uh, we'll return nil for now. So we hop back over here. We're validating the story. We're returning the story. That's great. Okay, so we're not using the story yet. Um, Let's just add our first thing here. So if the story.title is not there, then we'll say missing title. Um, this isn't really what we want, though. I think it does make sense to have an error. It does make sense to have a line number. So that's kind of what's happening with the one here. Um, so let's define what a story error is. We'll call it a story error. And we'll make that struct. So whoops, type. Story error is a struct. It's going to have code might be nice. So the code could be something that is independent of the string that we return. We could hyperlink that. So you could always go to a dedicated page that explains things in more detail. Um, we're going to skip that for now, though. And we'll just have a line, which is an int, and then a message, which is a string. And that looks good. So here we're going to return a story error. And it says it's an invalid it's an interface problem. It doesn't implement the missing method error. So we'll do that. There we go. Uh, and go please wants to rearrange those fields and that's fine by me. Okay, so uh, let's see. All right, these are in the wrong order now. And so I hate that because I actually like this order. So we're actually gonna be specific here and go with that. Awesome. Now. The obvious problem here is that we're returning a single error and we actually want to return a bunch of accumulated errors, but we'll get to that in a moment. So we run our test now. Uh, our first test still is fine, but now we have this. So we wanted this whole chain of things and instead we got this. 
if we come down here to the bottom, we can actually get a better sense of things. So we got missing title and we wanted one colon missing title. Aha. So this should actually be format.sprints f and then give it the that's close. Just fix that. Rerun. Top down to the bottom. And okay, so we have missing title. That part's actually good. Now we don't have missing author. So we can do that. Um, so let's just do this. If story authors blank, missing author. This line number two is interesting. It could be accurate. If there were a title on line one, then the author would be missing on line two. But if there isn't a title, then the line number is actually line one. So we'll do we'll do some uh lazy logic here and say um line is going to be two if story titles blank then we'll set the line to one and then we'll make this be line great uh so let's run that and the problem is that we're still not getting down to our author because we're returning a single error we actually want to return combined errors so let's write some code we wish we had so we'll say errors is going to be combined story errors uh so we'll define this up here type combined story errors is actually going to be a struct so we want to define some methods on it and it will expose errors of type story error i think we probably want this to be public at some point but we won't worry about that now and let's go ahead and make this one private until we need to make it public okay so down here we'll do if len errors dot errors is greater than zero we'll return that uh, otherwise, we'll return nil. So now we need to define our interface on the combined story errors so that it also is playing along with uh, the error interface. We can do that here. So what it will do is do that. And then I think what we can just do is error.error .error here. And that will work with, yeah what we've already defined here. That seems fairly clean. Let's run our tests. And we'll scroll down here and hop up a little bit. So in missing title, we don't have missing author. And I think that's because we're still returning. Yes, we're, so we're still returning here. So instead of returning, we want to accumulate as we go. OK, so I think what we want is to add a function. So we'll say func validate story title. Mm, we know we're a story. Validate title is going to take errors of combined errors and then it will take a story of type story and it will return combined story errors so that looks good that's certainly more verbose uh, than what we have down here but i think it's more sustainable so we'll say that and then we'll do the same thing for title uh sorry we'll do the same thing for author And that's not quite going to cut it. So I'll hop up here and do this. And then we just need to get rid of this and do great. Run our tests. And now we don't have either of those. Woof. OK, so the problem is that we don't have a line break and we can fix that. That makes sense. Um, so what we want to do here is actually just add a new line here, run our tests. All right, so the new error that we have now is invalid chapter title. And that doesn't feel specific enough to me. So let's take a look. Why is the chapter title invalid? The chapter title is invalid because it is missing an ID. So let's make this more specific. We'll say uh, missing chapter uh, ID be consistent here. Um, so invalid chapter title in line nine is probably needing to be more specific too. Yes, yeah, so that's missing chapter text, missing chapter title. Yeah, that one's missing chapter title. That seems good. So if we run our tests now, we're still going to fail, but now we have a better message, which is missing chapter ID. So let's figure that part out. Uh, we'll go to our validator. And we're going, to, we're going to want to iterate over our chapters. We'll do that like this. 
and we'll say errors is going to be validate chapter ID. To be able to indicate the line that an error happened on for a chapter, we'll want to keep track of the start line for the chapter. Now back to the validation, uh, and we'll define that. That looks good, missing chapter ID. Uh, we do want to be consistent here. I think ID is a good internal Go thing to be all caps, but uh, for what our user is seeing, the caps are probably just not helpful. Okay, so we did not get our missing chapter ID. Why is that? Let's first just print out our chapter here. That's actually our uh, valid one, so let's skip that for now. Okay. So our first one that we see is you ignore the phone. Hmm. And we know that that's not correct because the first thing we should see is something isn't right here. So the problem is our parser is too inflexible for us to get a chapter that has a title, but not an ID and also vice versa. And actually we see that if the ID is missing, uh, we don't even append interesting. Okay, so I think what we wanna do is a couple things. We wanna come over here and we'll say, if the matches are not three, that means we don't have everything we need. So we need to do something else. Let's do a new chapter missing text regex is going to be, that looks good. And let's just give it an example, right? Of, uh, we'll pull it from our, over here. Uh, it'll be like this. Let's make sure it would do the same thing here. Yeah, looks good. Um, and then we will have one, which is this. So this will be new chapter missing id projects is going to be that hmm this is a little naive because it doesn't explicitly not match having the id but we're only going to use it after the other has failed so i think we're okay here um just this comment alignment here. Okay, so we will try matches is going to be new chapter missing text regex. If the length of the matches is not two, then we'll do that and use the missing ID regex. If the link the matches is not to, okay, well, in this case, we'll actually return this. We don't know what to do with that. Um, otherwise, we can return the first match here, return the second, or the first match in the second position there. Uh, and that should make this a little more flexible. I still think there's going to be a problem. Let's, let's rerun. Um, so we're still with the missing chapter ID, and that's because in our parser, um, we're doing this. So if the chapter ID is blank, is not blank, then we add it. So I think what we want is, is or chapter, actually we had it there. There we go. And we'll do the same thing here. Great. So now if we run our tests, we see that we have, hmm, our missing chapter ID isn't coming through. We do have a missing author. Let's look up here a little bit. We see that our missing chapter ID is actually showing up on line zero, and that's because we're not setting our start line. So what we want to do now is to come down here and we're gonna change this to be line number. And what we can do then is set that when we start a new chapter. So actually, so let's pull this out because we don't only want to do that if there was a previous one and we'll set this to be line number. We'll set this to be start line of line number. Now, if we run our tests, still not missing chapter ID. Hmm. 
Aha, and that's because the line number is zero based, but in our text file, our line number should be one based. We'll run that now. And great, so we have this. Uh, the next thing we're missing is invalid choice on line five. So let's see what that guy looks like. Uh, move that one so it's over here. So here we have invalid choice, and the problem actually is missing choice ID. So let's clarify that. Okay, missing choice ID. And then this one is missing choice text. Okay, uh, so let's rerun that and we'll see the new failure. Right, missing choice ID, perfect. Um, so missing choice ID, we'll do errors. Hmm. Okay, we actually need to iterate over our choices here. So errors is going to validate choice ID. And this one is interesting because there's a couple of reasons why a choice ID could be invalid, but we'll start with just this initial scenario, which is that it doesn't exist at all. Great, missing choice ID. Uh, choice doesn't have a line number. It makes sense that it should. So it's not the start line because a chapter like starts and then goes on for multiple lines. A choice has a single line. So uh, let's just hop over there and we'll add a line here. And then we of course need to update our parser to pass that in. So parse choice uh, can take a line number plus one. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, this is going to be a line number, which is an int, and pass that in. OK, this is probably going to fail too, because I think our choice regex will suffer from the same problem that our title did, which is that it's overly specific. But uh, let's verify that. Yep, so missing choice ID is not being passed along. And the problem is that our choice regex isn't matching, so we know that we're actually getting in here. So uh, let's make this a little smarter too. So we'll do um, let's get to the invalid one. Okay, we care about these two. So this will be a choice without ID regex. It's going to look something like that. Uh, what this won't get is the one where it has like part of the ID. So let's do that too. Uh, we'll get rid of that for now. It'll be like that, 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 something like that. Mm, that doesn't help, does it? Actually, we can just get rid of that because we're only going to run this one after we ran that one and it failed. So that's fine. Um, this one will be choice without text regex. That seems fine too. All right, so um, what we can do now is go down to our parse choice. And if the length of matches don't work, we'll try something else. We'll do that. OK. Otherwise, we can return a choice which is the chapter ID but n and the line number, but not the text. You can still throw this in here. Um, great. Otherwise, we're going to try a choice that is the text, but not the ID. And I think that makes sense. We'll save that and run. And where are we at? Hey, we have missing choice ID now. Awesome. We don't have missing choice text. That's kind of interesting. 
Ah, so the problem here is that we're not registering as being a choice at all uh, because we have this open square brace. Um, so what I'm going to do is just change this here as well. This is a little silly, but we want to be flexible enough to catch the errors that the user is making. And I don't think there's a valid situation, or we can at least forbid the situation where this is valid. OK, so this works. Uh, the only remaining problem is that we're not checking to see if the choice text is invalid. So we'll do that. Validate. Validate choice text. And we'll implement that. Now we run our test. We're all the way through up to line nine, which has a missing chapter title. That one should be pretty straightforward. And it is. So now we need to handle the missing chapter text. That's fine too. This is a lot of boring boilerplate code, but the nice thing about it is if I want to come back and make it more granular, I have a function for everything that I care about. All right, that did not get missing chapter text. Hmm, so let's take a look at that. If the chapter body, well, let's do this. fmt.println chapter.line, chapter start line, and then the length of the chapter body. Okay, so we wanted this to be on line 10. Hmm, I see a line 9. Aha, yes, this is actually legit. So let's look at our issue here. The chapter starts on line 9. That's correct. The chapter body, which is blank, should start on line 10, which is after the chapter title. So the problem here really is just one of offset. This should be plus one. And now we're up to invalid chapter ID for choice. Invalid chapter ID for choice is actually a little bit tricky because we need to know the universe of choices, the universe of chapter IDs that a choice could go to. Okay, so we need to know all the chapter IDs that are in a story. So we'll say valid chapter IDs is going to be an array of strings. And then for chapter and chapters, we will append that. Okay, so now we can update validate choice ID to also include valid chapter IDs. So we'll say valid chapter IDs are a string array. And if they're not contain, if the chapter ID for the choice is not in the valid chapter IDs, then we have a problem. And we're good to go there. Uh, this should be string dot, no, slices dot contains. There we go. We'll run our tests. Okay, so it's just this is just a copy issue. So this would be valid chapter ID for choice. We run. Great. So now our problem is we are not detecting unreachable chapters. We're not detecting dead ends. And I think that's it. So uh, unreachable chapters. Unreachable chapters are chapters that have no choices linking to them. So hers is going to validate chapter is reachable. Hers chapter and the story chapters. That's not going to work. You want errors in chapter, but I'll, here we want choice chapter IDs. 
Okay. So what is choice chapter IDs? Choice chapter IDs is also going to be that. And then what this will be is that. So for every choice within a chapter, we'll get the choices chapter ID. We'll throw it into choice chapter IDs. And now we can implement this. So if the choice chapter IDs don't contain the chapter ID, then it is unreachable. Chapter is not reachable. Uh, the actual error is unreachable chapter. So let's fix that. There we go. We'll run our test. And we have unreachable chapter hmm. on 9 when we actually wanted it on 13. Hmm. Let's take a look at that. If we look for phone, this one really is unreachable. Nothing re uh, links here. So I think our test data should include that. So on 9, we'll say unreachable chapter. And I think that we're going to say line 13 actually is reachable. It's a little misleading because the link itself is invalid. But if you fix the link to have the text, then suddenly it is valid again. So let's just take a look and see where we're at. Okay, so we have missing chapter text coming on line 10, but it's showing up before line nine. And the reason for that is that we increment here uh, to do li start line plus one, we don't here. So we just need to make sure these are in the right order. And indeed we see that fixes the problem. So now the problem is we're not handling dead ends. So let's specifically do that. We don't have our intentional dead end in the invalid story like we do in the valid story. So let's make these consistent. We'll copy this and do that. Uh, so now when we make a dead end, we can verify that we're not uh, considering in intentional dead ends as accidental dead ends. So we'll hop back over here, we run our tests. Okay. Uh, invalid chapter ID for choice on line 36. That's new. Let's see what that looks like. That's not a choice at all. We'll have to look into that one. Okay, but first let's handle the dead ends. So a dead end is defined as a chapter that is not an intentional dead end and has zero choices. Let's do the naive thing first, which is to say errors is going to be validate not dead end errors chapter. And this should say dead end, I believe. Yep. All right, let's rerun that test. Okay, so it's showing up in the wrong line. And the problem is that we're showing it on the start line, and we actually want the end line. It's hard to know what the end line is unless you look at the next chapter. That's a reasonable way to do it, certainly. But I think it may make sense to just record the end line as well. So we'll add that here. This saves a little finagling of the data if we just already have that accessible. So um, when we run that again, now we're going to get zero. Don't want that. And that's because we're not setting the end line. So let's find start line. And here we go. So we can say story.endline. Nope. Sorry. Chapter.endline is going to be line number plus one because we're zero based. And then we will throw that down here as well. Although actually we don't have line numbers here, so it'll be length of the lines. Okay. And so dead end is on 17. Ah, okay. This is actually interesting. We don't want to increment here. And the reason we don't want to increment is because we're doing this when we have a new chapter. So we'll just get rid of that. Rerun. Okay. So now the problem is twofold. Okay. It wants number 36 to be invalid chapter ID for choice. Oh, and that's because that used to be intro. 
Uh, yeah, let's look at what this was. So this was start over, which pointed to intro, which didn't exist. So actually that's wrong. And instead it should just not show the dead end. So we'll come over here. Whoops, get rid of that. And now we just need to make sure that we don't show the dead end here because it's intentional. So we're still showing it. We want to get rid of that. We have the one on 31, which is correct, but we also have the one on 37, which is incorrect because we have our, uh, our bang bang here. So if we hop back to our structs, we will add one more thing to chapter, which is intentional dead end, and it's a Boolean. And then in our parser, we will check to see, I'll add something in here, which is intentional dead end. If intentional dead end, there we go. So we need to update this to return the right number of arguments, uh, which means updating all of our regular expressions. So this is a little bit annoying, but uh, what we could have here is at the end, we could maybe have two exclamation points. So we'll just change this a little bit and paste this in here. And so this regular expression says, capture this, there will be a space and then two exclamation points, maybe. So we'll grab this and do the same here. Oops. Perfect. And then we can do the same thing here too. There we go. Uh, cool. And so now we need to handle this. So we're going to increment all of these. Not these though. Okay. So this should be matches three is equal to blank, equal to bang, bang. Matches two is equal to bang, bang. Matches two is equal to bang, bang and false. Right, and then we should need to actually update our signature uh, to return the bool. I think this makes sense. So basically what it's saying is like, hey, if we failed to match everything, we're going to return nothing, nothing, and false. Here, if we were able to match the first thing, but not the second thing, so we have the title, but not the ID, we return the title, blank, and then whether or not this is equal to bang, bang. Looks good. We could do some refactoring here, but uh, that's not super exciting, so we'll skip that. All right, we got an error here, and that's because we're not in our validator considering this. So we'll say if not chapter dot intentional dead end and link of choices is zero. Hmm, not quite there. Okay, let's let's print this out then. FMT dot print line. This will be a chapter dot start line. And then chapter inline, chapter intentional dead end. Yeah, yeah, we'll do we'll do all that. Okay, so what we're working with is 32, uh, which is that one. Great. It ends on 37. It is not an intentional dead end, but it does have zero choices. Okay, so our intentional dead end is not getting parsed correctly. Let's hop over here. Um, and I think what we're finding now is this is getting complicated enough that it could use its own unit test. Uh, and because we don't want to expose it to our public package, I think this is something that makes sense for internal. All right, so what we'll do then is we'll open, in our internal folder, we will make a chapter title parser.go and chapter title parser test.go. Great. Um, this will be package internal test and this will be package internal. Okay. And so we will say funk chapter title parser. Let's grab this from over here. Actually, let's keep the same name. We'll just uh, capitalize it to export it. Okay. And you know what? We're just going to grab all of this, actually. Boom. Okay. 
So um, what's going to happen now is that we need the internal uh, where we'll come down here, find our We need to get our regex T, right? So let's do that. Okay. Okay. So that'll give us that. Um, if we run our tests, we're failing in the same place, which is great. But now we have a thread that we can pull on to have some unit tests here. So let's do that. Um, we will open the chapter title parser test. Uh, we're going to borrow our imports from over here with the exception of the OS. And we will say funk test parse. Chapter title. Okay, parse is a chapter title. Yep, uh, parse is a valid chapter title. Chapter title, chapter title. And this should be internal. Great. That's not what that is, though. It's parse, chapter title, and ID. So this is also going to take an intentional dead in. And we'll do a cert faults. So we run this. I'm going to skip the parser test for now. OK, that passes. So let's add in a few more. But actually, we're going to turn these into a test table. So we'll say tests. It's going to be a struct. It's going to take, it's going to have a name. It's going to have a line that gets parsed, the title we expect, the ID we expect, and whether it's a dead end. And here we go. So, parsed is a valid chapter title. Looks legit. Uh, we'll just break this just to make sure. It's first we'll run it and it's fine. Now we're going to intentionally break it and say uh, this is false. Oh, whoops. <laughs> now we intentionally break it and say this is true. And it errors out. Great. OK. Uh, so let's give us another, ourselves another example. This is it will parse with an intentional dead end. So we got our bangs there. And we're good there. Run that. OK, so that did not work. Um, and we should figure out why that is. We're off to a good start. Um, so the chapter title parser. Let's just take a look at our line and matches here. OK, so for the line with the bangs, we got the original thing with the whole thing. We got our chapter title, we got our chapter title, we got our double bangs. So matches three is going to equal that. Um, oh, yeah, so the problem is matches three actually could be any amount of space, or it could be a single space. Let's do space plus, And then we can actually clean this up a little bit. So is intentional dead end. And we're going to take a string, a marker string. And we will return a bool and we'll say strings dot trim space marker is that. And so now we can clean this up a little bit. And so this will be is intentional dead end 
matches two. Matches two. Matches three. All right, now we're back to passing. Um, we could leave it at that, but I think it actually makes sense to just go ahead and add in a few more tests. So I'm just going to do that really quickly. Okay, so that one's interesting. So if we look at our chapter parser, chapter title parser, uh, this one is failing for the title with no ID. OK, so it's capturing it all together. So we should look at this. Um, aha. That's being too greedy. And now everything passes. Great. So what we've done is we've extracted this. We've made it testable. We've written some good tests for it that should have uncovered our bug. So now if we come back here and remove our skip, we'll see if this test passes too. It doesn't. Darn it. And now the error is just that we have an extra line break on our errors. So what we'll do is just come in here and we'll look for, whoops, that. And we'll just do a strings.trim space on this. Run our tests, everything passes. Let's just make sure we're not leaving any skips around. I know we have one, get rid of that. Run our tests, everything passes. Awesome. So now we have a real validator that can parse a story and convert it into something that is walkable, something that we can move around the data of. We can visit a chapter and we could display all the choices. The user could pick a choice and we could take them to that chapter. We're not going to build that interactivity yet. What I do want to build, though, is the command line validation side of this. So over in our command, uh, in our main.go, we are going to beef this up a little bit. So we're going to do a couple things. Let's just let's clear this out for now. We will read an argument. So re get file name from the command line arguments. And that will give us that. And if file name doesn't exist, we'll ask for one. OK, so we'll say content error is going to be read file and the file name. If there's an error, we'll panic about that. Um, well, we won't literally panic, but we'll print it out. Otherwise, let's just print that out for now. No, otherwise, otherwise we will get story and error is going to be parse, parser.parse uh, string content. Makes sense. If the error is not nil, we'll print the error and exit. Otherwise, we'll print story. Actually, I kind of like that. Um, the story dot title is valid. Okay, let's give this a few runs and see what happens. So, uh, first thing we'll do is go run command. Squire main.go with no arguments. And it tells us uh -oh, we get an out of range thing. So what we'll do is uh if the length of the args is less than that, then we should do that. I got a little ahead of myself here, so we'll get rid of this. Wonderful. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, please provide a file name. Fair enough. So we'll do package uh parser test data valid.md and that looks good except we're printing stuff out so let's look for our print lines and we'll just nuke these real quick um okay it's right here great let's 
Let's run that again. Still printing something out. There we go. Great. You're probably going to die is valid. Okay. Uh, so now in our main go, we will look for the error case. So we'll go to invalid. And that looks pretty good. It's giving us the line numbers and it is telling us what's wrong. Uh, it would be really nice if we could use this in Vim in our quick fix to jump easily to these errors. So let's try that. We'll do C expression system. Uh, and then, all right, so we really want what we had above. So let's do that. Paste that in there and need another parenthesis and we're good. Okay, that didn't exactly work. Uh, and the problem is that this format is not what Vim wants. So what Vim wants is the file name and then the number. So when we, when we did our act here, you can see file name, line number, optional column. Uh, so what we'll do is just modify this a little bit to take the errors. And so we'll iterate over them. We'll do for that and that. Um, let's just do this to see if it still works. Okay, so we have an unimported name. Right, combined story errors is not uh, exported. So let's go over to our parser. Actually, this is in the validator. And so combined story errors. I think it's, I think it's actually a combined story error, but we do want to export it. So let's save everything over in our main. We also need to expose the error itself. So we'll do this as errors and hop back over to main. And now that looks happy. Let's see how that looks. So we're, we're not adding in the file name yet. We're just uh, giving this a try. Okay, so that still looks the same, which means we didn't break anything in that our range is working. So what we'll do actually is fmt.sprintf, and we're going to put in the file name, which is a string, the, and then I guess our message should work. Mm -mm. Agreed. Okay, let's give that a try. Hey, look at that, it popped right open. Uh, and it takes us to exactly where we wanna be. We're on line one. Now line one does have a few different items, but as I jump through these, you see even though the line up top isn't moving, uh, it is moving in our quick fix. And once we get past line one, this is great. Uh, so this is an unreachable chapter with a missing chapter title. Let's give it a chapter title, hello. That's a bad title, but if we rerun our command, uh, you'll notice that now the only error on line nine is unreachable chapter. So you have a workflow here, although it's not an ideal workflow, where you can just work through these errors, fix them, rerun the command, uh, and correct all the problems with your story. Obviously, this would work better as a language server or some sort of extension so that you don't have to manually run the command every time. But uh, as you can see, we're well on our way to getting towards that better future to live in. Thanks for joining me on the first part of this adventure. You can learn more about Squire down in the description. In the next episode, we'll be building the EPUB publishing side of things and also build an export so you can publish your story as a standalone HTML file. Until next time.